Hi, my name is James Gurney. I've heard from a lot of you who are new painters who want to figure out how to break into oil paint, and some of you who are more experienced painters who want to get back to basics. And one of the best ways to do that is to limit your variables to black and white paint. So what we'll do is work our way through a whole series of these exercises in black and white, working on basic things like transparent versus opaque, and oiling up or oiling out, but also dry brush, brushy strokes, scratching out, and other basic techniques of oil painting that you can use, not just for painting dinosaurs, but for painting any kind of subject matter. So let's have some fun working with oil paint at its most elemental, black and white. Using paint transparently and opaquely is hardly an unconventional painting technique, but I want to make that one of our exercises so we can see what happens when you use black paint over a white background and white paint over a black background. Usually when you lightly cover a black background with a lighter color, it's called scumbling, but it's the same basic effect as transparent painting with glazes. You're seeing partially through the paint and you're seeing some of the background behind it and it's a mix of the two. And we're going to see with black and white some interesting differences between transparent and opaque passages. What I've got here is a piece of white illustration board textured with a fake canvas texture and some black cardboard below it. Using a regular colored pencil, not water soluble, I'm going to draw two squares on the whiteboard and then using a light colored colored pencil I'll draw light squares on the dark board. These will be our areas for transparent and opaque swatches. I want to seal this surface before putting oil on it so I'm going to use some acrylic matte medium squeeze a little of that on there And then, using a brush, I'm going to just make sure I cover all the areas with a little thin layer of that matte medium. Just enough to seal it. It can be very thin, in fact. Now I can use the oil freely on anywhere on this surface. Okay, now here's my little palette. I want to keep it in the shot so you can see what I'm doing. I'm using palette paper. It's a gray polyethylene coated paper. You can use freezer paper if you want to use white paper. Now I'll scoop some of this alkyd medium, the liquid, into one of the palette cups. And then get some of the odorless mineral spirits and put that into the other palette cup. The mineral spirits will act kind of the equivalent of water and watercolor. It thins out the paint. I also use the mineral spirits in this brush cleaning system, which I'll explain later. Okay, keeping this simple, we're just going to use black and white paint. So squeeze out a little white paint, titanium white, and a little ivory black. Now this is a bristle long haired flat with just some liquid alkyd medium and a little bit of the turpentine or the gamsol and I'm dragging it across to try to get a light colored kind of a middle gray square. It's a little uneven and a little darker than I want. I'll try to brush it out. That's more or less of a middle gray. Clean out the brush because I want to use just white in it with no residue of black. Remove the uh, Gamsol from the brush fibers using a rag. Okay, now just using white and a little bit of liquid. I want to apply a thin layer, just scrubbing it with a brush.
that white is more opaque than I expected, so I want to remove some of this paint. First I'll brush it out. Okay, then I can use the rag to lift a little bit of that off too. So just dabbing it with a rag will remove some of that white paint and give me a slightly darker gray, a more even gray, about the same value, I think, as that first one I painted. Okay, now I want to make an opaque uh, gray. It doesn't have to be a real thick paint, but I just need to mix white and black into a middle gray and apply it to both of these squares, which should look the same. But even though this is a thin layer of paint, it is opaque, so the light isn't traveling through it. I can make it darker by painting into the wet paint. It's called painting into the soup, when you put down some color and put another color into it. You can actually mix colors on the painting itself, as well as on the palette. And now to sharpen it up, I can use a little bit of pure black to sharpen the edges a little bit. We've got four different ways of making a gray square. Transparent black over white, opaque mixture over white, and then a scumbled white over black, and then the gray over black. Notice how the white over black is cooler or bluer than the black over white. And in case you think that transparent one is darker than the one scumbled on the black, let's put a mask over and turn them. And let's desaturate them so there's no color now. I took that out. But notice how the grays are all pretty similar. So our eye is fooling us into thinking that the one on the dark background is lighter than it really is. Okay, put the color back in, remove it, and there we are again. Okay, the next exercise we're going to do is called oiling up, or oiling out as it's sometimes called. This involves going into a partially finished painting and rejuvenating the painted surface of the dry paint by giving a light coat of medium on the surface so that new strokes added will look like they were originally mixed and blended with the first layer of paint. Now in order to show you why oiling up is important, let me show you what happens if you don't oil up. I'm working over dry paint here and applying some gray opaque um, paint to the surface. And as you can see, it forms a dry brushed edge, kind of a ragged edge, because those strokes don't blend into the background. Now backing up to the first step here on this exercise, we want to paint two gray circles. I've mixed a little bit of cobalt dryer in with the white so it'll dry overnight and I'm just choosing a fairly light color of gray fairly flat I'm not trying to model this into a sphere quite yet but we're gonna paint this then I'll speed it up here for the second one paint the second one and we'll let those dry overnight Okay, so now we've got two dry circles of gray paint and a bristle filbert. I'm going to oil up just with liquid. You can use a slower painting medium, a traditional oil painting medium, if you want to have more working time. But just a thin layer, not too much oil on top here. But now we've got both these circles oiled up. And then we've got a little bit of black. Just pure black first. Let's just try seeing how this works without any white in there. This is using black transparently over that 
circle. That's a very hard edge, so I'll get a clean, dry brush and just sort of work it to get that edge to soften up. Now there's still going to be a little bit of brush character in here because I'm using the paint so thinly and transparently. But it gives me a fairly soft transition compared to the dry brush that I got on the purely dry paint. If I want to lighten up that shadow side, I can dab at it with a cloth and lighten it up just a little bit. So this is just one way of, of painting something. Now on the second one, I'm going to do the same idea, except I'm going to use some white into those black mixtures. So I'll use white to create the reflected light area and the shadow. And then a little more white to make it gray so I can make this transition along the terminator. So usually it's good to mix wet into wet appearances with dry brush effects in a painting. Uh, but the good thing is you don't have to get the wet soft areas only by painting a la prima from the beginning, mixing all the wet colors together. You can simulate that look by wetting the surface of dry paint and working back into it. Now when you're painting, of course, you can use the tip of the brush to handle the paint. But I also like to sometimes use the side of the brush for getting certain effects. And often the older the brush, the better. Mm -hmm. Here are four brushes. This is a large artificial sable or white sable flat. These are two bristle brushes, a long flat and a filbert. And this is just a cheap craft brush. But I can use this on its side to get certain effects. And I'll work light over dark but you can do the same thing with dark over light. This is smooth black cardboard that's been coated with acrylic matte medium. I put a little bit of liquid in with the white and using this cheap brush that's not in good shape, I can roll the side of it and get a kind of a rough grainy texture or even drag it. I call this side dragging because I'm not using the tip of the brush at all. And this is really great for the rough bark of trees. As you can see, I'm using a dark over light, using the side of the brush and side dragging it to get this grainy texture to these trees. Now another way to get instant textures with wax paper. Here's some black. The reason for the wax paper is it doesn't absorb the oils. The oils will just sit on the surface of it. I'll make a mask here to cover over the edges. This is a very imprecise way to apply paint, obviously. Get it nice and wrinkled up and apply it to the surface and just dab at it a few times. Not too many times because you want to keep it rough looking. The gray circles are dry oil paint, opaque gray that I mixed and painted on, allowed to dry. So this will float on the surface of that 
And what I'm trying to do is make it look like a rough ball. A sphere with a real textural surface. Now I can lift the mask. Using a clean brush, I can put a few highlights on there. The highlights would probably be scattered around on such a rough ball. To make this more believable, I may want to unify the tones in the shadow. So I mix some black and just drag that over to give a little more of a complete solid gray shadow area. Let's apply this to the painting. So I mixed up some yellow brown and just to get some random texture on the ground, I'll use the wax paper. Here I've got two prepared areas of board, one white and one dark. I'm mixing liquid with the paint and just want to show how I can get a stroke with a lot of brush character by mixing the uh, liquid with the white. Try the same thing with black. This is a more textural priming surface so you don't see it quite as much but it's a little bit of a brushy character. So I want that for painting the reflections, the dark reflections. They've got to be fairly sharp edged. And I'm starting with a small brush here. And these are the reflections of the dinosaur itself in the water near the dinosaur. And I'm working over this paint below, which is fairly dry. Let's talk about scrubbing the paint on dry. Here's a bristle brush working on a prepared surface of illustration board and just tapping it with the end of the brush to get that kind of rough furry character. And I want to use this same effect, I'll put it to use right away here, by using the paint dryly and leaving some of that light colored underpainting underneath. I can turn the brush around to scratch through the paint. This is another basic unconventional technique. If you lay down the paint over a good sealed surface, you should be able to scratch through with the tip of the brush for things like hair or even a signature. A lot of plein air sketches are signed this way because it's proof it was done while the paint was wet. So I can scratch through while the paint stays wet on this light side of the uh, Tyrannosaur. Here I'm trying to take this tip of the brush and hit the surface end on with it. It's a different character from the side dragging strokes we did earlier. Another brush, this is an older, flat, synthetic. And I can use some liquid. And then just hit it over and over again and build up a rhythm. And that'll look a lot like organic scale textures.
So we've tried a bunch of different techniques using just black and white oil and various mediums and various tools. Some of the techniques we've done are very familiar, like transparent and opaque, and other kinds of brushwork is more unusual, and wax paper and things like that. What I recommend you do, whatever medium you're working with, whether it's oil or acrylic or casein or gouache, is to just use black and white like this to do these basic exercises and try out different mediums, try out different tools, and that'll give you a whole bunch of different options not just for painting dinosaurs, of course, but for painting landscapes or portraits or cityscapes or whatever it is that you paint. I believe that it's good to have as many different technical tools as possible and options as possible so that when you look at nature and you see a texture or you see an effect, you can figure out how you can translate that into paint. This has been an excerpt from a longer oil painting tutorial called Unconventional Oil Techniques. And in the full video, I'll take you through the painting of all three of these dinosaur paintings from start to finish, including the sketches. And I'll also take you through each of these 11 painting tutorials that demonstrate the unusual techniques that I use uh, for various painting assignments. If you want to see another sample from the series, check on this link here or click on this one here. Don't forget to subscribe down here. And down in the description, I've got lots of links to materials, download tutorials, and DVDs. Thanks for watching, and remember the spirit of invention and experimentation. That's the key to learning to paint.